Hello everyone. I am back and I want to thank everyone for your patience while I was absent for a bit. Um, I'm starting off just with another What's Hold video. It's the easiest way to kind of get back into the swing of things. Plus we're a little bit behind um, in sharing our sales that have happened on eBay, Poshmark, Ruby Lane, and etc. etc. <laughs> Okay, so we are talking about what sold in our online shops from October 23rd through the 29th. And we're going to start off with eBay. We actually had quite a few sales on eBay for that week towards the end of October. Um, it definitely, we had the most sales there that we had anywhere. So we're starting off with this fish skinner little gadget. Um, it looks like this. And the reason we picked it up and I knew what it was is because I've sold it before. So I have, I found one new in the box one time and I believe we sold it for about $40, 30 or $40. I think it was $40. Um, we sold that for it in its original box with a little booklet and everything. And so when I saw this, even though it was pre-owned and it needed a little bit of cleaning up, um, I figured it would also do well, so it sold for $25. I need to double check my prices on here, on my phone, as usual. I'm not ready. <laughs> and I have to scroll down pretty far because we're going back a little ways into October. Can you believe it's like almost halfway through November already? Crazy. But I do believe this sold for the full asking price of $25. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Yep. $25 plus shipping. So Townsend Fish Skinner uh, made in the USA. Let me see if I can go closer. You can see it right there. It says what it is right on it. So definitely a bolo I would keep an eye out for. These are kind of an unusual little find. They were at our little bins clearance store. And I just, you know, happened to look them up, see them, that there was three of them together. They're, they're called Uniframe. They're a adjustable picture frame thing that you can do for hanging your art. Um, you can reuse them. You can change them to other pictures, different sizes. And it goes up to, I think, size 20 by 20. So I did a quick, I can't remember since it was the bins. I usually don't look stuff up there. So I might have just grabbed them and thrown them into my little basket. Um, but these actually sold for $30. So, you know, I paid probably pennies, less than a quarter a piece and sold them for ten, about $10 each. Now the, um, the black marks there on the front, this was my solution to somebody's yard sale pricing that was written in Sharpie on the front of the package was to scribble it out <laughs> with more Sharpie. I really didn't care. Um, it's not, wasn't like a high end item person wasn't going to be keeping the box or needing the box for anything. So that was just my quick solution for that. Not like recommended for it everything that's got prices on it. This was something my husband picked up not long ago at a Goodwill in on one of our little road trips. It was in Montana, but um, just down in Missoula. We had gone down there for a few different weekends. And he found this. It sold for, let's see, the full asking price of $35. It's interesting, though, because he... I don't remember what he paid for it um, at the Goodwill. It, it's kind of a pricey Goodwill, so he might have paid more than he wanted for it. But um, it was interesting because I saw another one. We were together at Goodwill recently, and I saw another one. And I said, hey, do you want... Because it sold actually fairly quickly, within a month or so. Like, do you want another one? And he's like, no. <laughs> so either it was a pain to ship or he just didn't get as much for it as he wanted and, um, you know, was just like, no, it wasn't worth it. He was happy this one had sold and that it didn't linger 
around very long. I sold some fabric. So I've talked about this fabric in the um, fabric videos that I had. And this was a tapestry, big kind of piece of, um, well, heavy duty fabric, upholstery fabric. And there was three yards of it. And I sold that one for an offer of $80.99. And the I got really good feedback from the buyer. They were happy to find more of this fabric. And they thought my shipping was reasonable. I just used a um, medium flat rate box to put it in. But they she mentioned the shipping price, you know, the reasonable shipping cost in the feedback. So that was kind of cool. Okay, it is the season for merino wool. Well, um, generally, I think other resellers talk about this. Uh, brands that are, would normally just be kind of so-so. I mean, I'm not saying that this is great. These sold for $40. We took an offer, um, so $20 a piece. Um, I think I picked these up at a yard sale this summer for either $1 or $2 a piece. And it was either my husband could use them or we would just pop them up for sale. We opted to just list them together. They were identical, just two different colors. And someone could get a couple different, um, you know, base layers for the season. So those actually did go within a month or two. Bodum, my husband picked this one up. I want to say it was at the bins, um, the little bins, clearance center that we have because that's generally where he picks things like this up but we have gone to an, a couple other thrift stores um, as we traveled a little bit and it's possible he got it from there but it wouldn't have been more than one or two dollars no matter where he got it and it sold for $18.99 nice kind of nice looking Bodum is okay I mean we've sold Bodum things before, usually glass, um, but, and coffee related. And, but this was just like a nice looking stainless steel tumbler. So $18.99 was good. This next one, I don't know much about. I think this was one of our personal items and it only sold for $15. Um, it's like a mobile hotspot. I have a feeling we yeah, we bought it a while back. So I'm sure it's just outdated and it's just, you know, I'm not saying go out and bolo this one or look for it to re to flip. This was just something in our possession we wanted to get rid of. And then we sold this hat. This one was new with tags. It only sold for $12. You know, uh, K-Max has something to do with a helicopter. I don't know. I... I think this was one of the earlier hats that we picked up and um, I don't, I believe that one was at Goodwill, not at the bins clearance where we get most of our hats. And speaking of most of our hats, this was a really nice sale. It didn't sell for 70. It only sold for 45, but anytime I can get 45 for a baseball hat, I am thrilled about that. This, um, I don't think I showed it to you ever. It was a little while back, but I did hit my little bins clearance center at a time where someone must have donated a bunch of 80s hats. So 80s trucker hats, a few sports teams, all sorts of different advertising hats. And uh, we still haven't listed all of them. But um, this was one of the good ones that I totally scoped out. Like, I think I got like 20, 25 hats that day. It was quite a bit and just did quick research on some of these. This is a 1980s Seattle Seahawks and it sold for $45. So that was a good deal. Um, anyway, a lot of those were trucker hats. And then we went like a week or two later and it felt like the rest of the hats got donated um, like it almost felt like the same person, but maybe it was somebody else. And, but the, a lot of those hats had a lot of dry rot and, um, the foam disintegrating and they were just kind of a mess. So we just kind of cherry picked through what had been donated that time. 
This next one is a, a little cauldron, little copper kettle kind of thing. N you know, it's not very big. It's just four and a half, four and a quarter inches. The brand was Gecko, and I do believe, you know, I honestly meant to go through all of this stuff with my husband before I made this video, but it's like after dinner, it's late, and and he he fell asleep, <laughs> so I didn't get a chance to uh, ask him about this. But this sold for thirty dollars. I do remember being with him one day when we were thrifting. One of the few times we pop out to thrift by ourselves and. Um, there was a few different copper pieces he picked up that day from just our little local thrift store. I'm guessing that's when that was from. Another hat, Eddie Bauer Performance Systems. That one sold for the $16.99 that's showing on the screen. Next up is a uh, reel, fishing reel. Didn't sell for 50, but sold for 40. We do find in the last few weeks, we have been definitely selling lots of things with offers. Um, you know, this was a fairly good week for eBay. Um, but as I catch up on the what solds, we've had a few slower weeks where we definitely were more inclined to accept lower offers and to make lower offers. Um, it's just an interesting quarter for like, I'm not complaining, like sales are much better now than they were in the summer, but, um, yeah, it's definitely, you can see the effect of the economy and, and I don't know, it's just, it's a different kind of year, right? And so we're just kind of willing to keep things moving. We both, with my trip and everything, we both kind of got busy and away from reselling a little bit. We were just kind of keeping our hands in it. Um, and, you know, so when things are kind of slow like that, part of it is our fault, you know, the level of activity that we've been able to put into it. But you're just more likely to, for cash flow and to keep things moving, you're more willing to, you know, maybe take a lower price than you normally would. But I did notice I had one week where we were just getting low ball offers like crazy. Like, like really low that I wouldn't even entertain, you know, $10 on a $60 item. And I'm like, no, I'm not that desperate. <laughs> so, but we did take some offers just to get things gone. Like this hat, uh, we got a $10 offer. So we just took that. This wasn't as interesting as, uh, it was made in China, I think has a vintage look, but, um, you know, not as desirable as that other one that I just recently showed you. And a pair of shoes. We got an offer kind of low on this one, $35 for Allen Edmonds. Some Allen Edmonds shoes can be really high money, but we had a few things going against this pair. And I don't remember which of us picked these up. It was probably just at the bins. And then my husband cleaned them up a little bit, but they were only a size seven and a half men's, which is pretty small. And then triple E, I believe that's narrow. So they were narrow and small. So once we found somebody who wanted them <laughs> and they offered us $35, we said, oh yes, we will take that. And then here's a fun little coffee mug. We This was one my husband picked up, How to Eat Maine Lobster. This was Bin's, I remember when he brought this home. And that was just kind of fun. Um, let's see the bottom. Two Lights was the brand. Just a souvenir mug about, obviously, how to eat lobster. Yeah, a little diagram on how to eat Maine lobster. So that's kind of fun. Sold for that full asking price of $15 plus shipping. Now, here was my best sale of the week. You probably saw on the thumbnail. Look at that denim jacket. This sold for $160. And this was super exciting, okay? Because, well, what was exciting was the fact that I love selling something that's this trashed. So it was a vintage denim, which, okay, number one, 
vintage denim is good, especially right now. Um, you can hear I'll kind of scroll through the pictures. Here's the tag. Sanferized, always a good thing in vintage clothing. Buckaroo by Big Smith. Big Smith's a company. I think it's still making overalls, and that's where I see it. Um, mostly as an overalls, denim overalls. And I just like that label was so good. It was a size 44, which is actually a fairly big size. And that'll come into play later as I tell this story. Um, anyway, so it was blanket lined as well. You could kind of see it's got, it had some wool in the blankets. But look at all the holes and the distressing and the age. So I'm believing this was probably like the 60s is when this jacket came out, but it was used like for work. Like I live in Montana, like this is a work jacket, right? It had this really cool like pleating. I saw this in other people's listing. They called it like pleated. So this kind of like folded over a little area down the front. Um, all the holes were kind of torn up from use for the buttons. And a little bit of the pocket inside was a little bit torn. The There was a little bit of paint, I think, or wear. I know there was paint on it somewhere. Um, the blanket itself was in fairly good, the lining was in fairly good shape. So you would think there would be a lot of maybe moth damage or something like that. But that was actually in good shape. Here's the other side. There's the brass buttons. And then the collar was totally frayed and split, as you can see. <laughs> right? And but I and then there's some of the paint. So, but I totally was like, someone is gonna want this. And I picked this up at a at a thrift store that's going out of business. And she had some vintage clothing in there and she didn't have this price super high because of the damage. I think it was about $5, but I was like, you know what, with that old label, somebody is going to want that. That's like denim history, right? So I couldn't really find comps that were exactly the same, um, with the blanket lining, but this, this style was definitely popular, um, without the blanket lining. So I started off at whatever it says there, 190. Someone had like one in really good shape, like, you know, they had it listed for like t over two or close to 300 or something. Um, but anyway, yeah, there was a whole story about my husband sent out some offers at lower because he wasn't really paying attention and he thought this was a jacket that we had listed a long time ago and so it came up really quickly it got watchers right away it got like five watchers right away and it came up really quickly in the able to send offers to it and so he thought it was this old listing so he like sent out an offer and I'm like oh no I'm like what did you send out and he had been kind of healthy with his offer and so I got an offer for maybe 120 or 130 and I was like, no, that's too low. I like just listed this. And so I just held off. I just waited. I didn't counter it. I just held like the offer open. And then the next morning I woke up and there was an offer because I had listed it at 190 or best offer. And so the next morning we got a 160 offer and we took that one. And because it just came as a straight offer, it wasn't in response to the offer he had sent or anything like that. So I said, yes, 160 is totally doable, is exactly kind of right where I wanted to be. So I took that offer. Well, the story does not end here. This actually, as we, as we packaged it up, my husband's like, you know what? I think this is going to an actor. Address was like whatever in ho near Hollywood, right? California. And I had just noticed that the last name and then California, and I didn't really pay much attention to the rest of it. 
my husband, as he was putting the label on, he's like, I think so. He Googled the address and it, it's pro it's one of those like mailbox places and a lot of different movie stars and actors have their mail. Like they have that ad address as their mailing address. And so we were like, oh, this definitely is him, right? Because the name was the same. And I'm not going to tell everyone who it was at this point. I, I don't know. I don't share other buyers' names, so I'm not going to do that this time. Um, but anyway, I was like, that's so cool. Like, he, I wonder if he collects vintage denim. And so sure enough, I went and I, I Googled his name and vintage denim and an article came up, the New York Times did an interview with him, and he's, he's probably, he's older than me, um, and he, so there's a little blurb about him and his collections, and he collected vintage denim, and in the interview, he said during the pandemic, he got on eBay, and he would just search for old, made in the USA, vintage denim, and then he specifically mentioned that it's hard to find denim in a larger size um, from the 50s and the 60s. And so when he finds it, he gets really excited. So I think that's why when this one popped up, when I listed it and it was a size 44, um, he was excited about that. So his little interview said he had like, you know, he had a bunch of denim overalls and he had an over, you know, he had like 27 denim jackets and and things like that. So I just thought that was interesting. One of those fun stories about reselling that um, just kind of, I don't know, just kind of makes things interesting, right? Okay. So we went from that wonderful sale, $160 to $12.99. <laughs> um, but if you need the sewing machine instruction book, for a Singer Touch and Sew 604, then we had one available for them to use. And that did sell for that full $12.99. Next up, another small little sale. This actually sold for $11.53. Um, yes, the buyer was trying to match up their total with the shipping to come out to an even number. People do that sometimes. But this was just a little stand. You could put anything on it. Um, it was made in Hong Kong. And then another thing my husband picked up while we were down in Missoula at one of the little, not Goodwill, but a little thrift store down there. Vintage. It's a 1960s um, practice putting cup little golf hole that you could practice like in your office, whatever. But it was, you know, by Arnold Palmer. So that sold for $14. And now look at this, this little piece of plastic. Plastic, it's Melita Coffee Number Six Cone Filter Pour Over. So, you know, I see these pour over things fairly often. You know, all different brands, all different whoever's. But, um, you know, we pick this up at the bins thrifting place as we tend to do 24.99 is what this sold for and it's so funny because i saw a starbucks one the other day that was ceramic and it only sells for like 12 dollars so this brown plastic one <laughs> sold for twice as much as a ceramic starbucks one interesting right I don't know if you guys remember this. This did not sell for $50 and my husband finally just took a $20 offer to get rid of it. It's it's broken. It's incomplete. Um, but we picked it up on our road trip out to Washington back in June. And my husband hemmed and hawed about picking this up because it wasn't complete. And he checked like every other bag at the, th at the store to see if maybe it had gotten separated or something like that. Um, but he kind of thought maybe somebody would want it for parts or something like that, or to kind of modify it and do something different. But 
they probably want to do that, but they don't want to pay a whole lot. Now, if this had been complete, it would have been really good money. So I see where he was going with that. Next up was this White House Black Market. Um, I don't generally do a, a whole lot of this brand. Um, it, I like the style of this blazer. And so when I came across it, I thought, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and... It was size 6. It wasn't even that great. I didn't pay a lot. It was only a couple bucks. But it was like a peplum style. Peplum is that kind of where it's gathered in at the waist and kind of flares out. And uh, it sold for $40. And I thought that was pretty good. So I will keep my eyes open for something similar. And this one was one of the ones I wanted to ask my husband about. I know we had picked up some uh, shaving things. Uh, hi, hi, hi. Um, I had picked up some shaving things at an estate sale, and you've seen them in my what solds over the past few weeks. So I don't know if this was one of them or if this was something we picked up separately. I wanted to double check with him because I just gave him, it was a cardboard box full of like, shaving related things and um, I'm thinking this was one of those that was in there and then we paid ten dollars for the whole box and we've already made at least a hundred or more with the stuff that's been in it now this was another interesting find this one only sold for thirty seven dollars but I've got a story and you have to look at condition and ignore that because I totally messed up on that so I had two of the, I have two of these, had. Um, this one is the damaged one. And I I did in my description down here, if you can see it, um, I did adjust the uh, condition description down here. I says it has one crack seen on the inside extending halfway down the beaker. You know, it's best just for display, blah, blah, blah. Um, but since I had two of them, I had done the better one first. And then I didn't end up changing this part of the condition, like the little condition box. I changed it in the description, but not up there. So that was a mistake. But the buyer has left me good feedback, so they knew what they were getting. Um, I w went ahead and took the $37 offer because it was... Um, because it did have the damage, but it did display really well. And I do have the other one in better condition listed for about 60 or $70. I can't remember. But this was when we went down to Missoula uh, and went to Goodwill. These were on the, the shelf with the coffee mugs. And I was like, that looks old. Like, I don't know. Whenever you you get around and handle enough vintage and things like I knew this was more than vintage that this had to, these had to be antique. And so, um, what it is, it's called a beer beaker and I have pug in the, in the title because it's, uh, printed under glaze. So the pattern is under the glaze or the decoration. Um, there you can see the crack. It goes down it. It's got quite a bit of crazing and everything like that. But it's Villeroy and Bach and made in Germany, but a very old uh, back stamp for them. And then if you look also, you can kind of see the 06. And so that's the date for 1906 for this beer beaker. So what, what they did is... Um, Bill Ryan Bach had made these beer beakers and they made them for various cities. And this one happens to be for Denver, Colorado. So what I found in my research was that most of these are cities in Germany. So it was made in Germany. They did all the German cities and those are a lot more common. So having a city from the United States is, is more rare. Um, so that's why I priced the other one higher that was in better shape. But um, I just think that's so interesting. They were like 99 cents a piece and they were just sitting there with the coffee mugs, but they're from 1906. 
Like, that's just crazy. Crazy, crazy. Okay, this is another one I wanted to ask my husband about. Like, where did you get it? This, this is one of two things. This is something that's been in our possession for a long time because I'm discovering how much of a kind of a squirrel my husband is as he lists things. He's like, oh yeah, we've just had this forever. It's just been in our stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Um, or he picked this up at the little bins place. Um, anyway, they're like convex mirrors. These They sold for $15. So I don't know. Man, he's just cleaning stuff out. Jamie Sadock. This is actually a brand I will pick up. I'm trying to, here we go. Here's a good label for you to see. Usually um, golf clothing and tennis, like golf and tennis, kind of, kind of unusual. A lot of times, like it's got a very unusual kind of print. This is kind of polo shirt ish, um, but kind of rich, rich people type clothing. <laughs> Can you tell I'm not one by the way I talk? Um, Anyway, so kind of an interesting design. It sold for $28.99. And next up, Cool. This was a woman's jacket, puffer jacket, size small. Cool is one of our favorite brands, correct? K-U-H-L. That sold for $69.99. I was happy about that. Next up is this poster. Uh... I don't know. I remember when my husband listed this and I, I can't remember if he said that it was in one of the tools or something that he was just working on getting rid of or just in all his kind of like paper goods. I don't know, but it's a woodworking, um, poster for router bits and things like that. So that sold for $35. And we're getting close to the end of eBay sales for that week. This was a vintage Gore-Tex camo decorated, uh, like a baseball hat. So um, it was made in the USA. That sold for $25, full asking price. And this jacket sold for $30. That was also full asking price, vintage Woolrich. Um, kind of had a Southwest kind of look to it. Um, it was only a women's medium. You know, comps were kind of so-so on that one. So $30 was good for us. Okay, so let's move over to Posh. Posh has been fairly dead lately. We, um, like I think I mentioned last time, we've kind of been focusing on hard goods. And while we do move some hard goods over to Poshmark, um, we haven't been listing as much clothing and that's really when we're listing a lot of clothing, then I'm always moving the clothing over to Poshmark and we sell some of it over there. So I also know when I'm not doing that regularly, then our sales tend to drop quite a bit. And so I am, I think I have some catching up to do with moving, um, some things over and just kind of refreshing things over there. But we did sell these REI um, trail gaiters. Uh, they just, they go over your, um, what do you call it? They go around your, the cuffs of your pants when you're hiking. So you, you don't have to get your pants all wet as you go through brush and everything. These were size small, medium. My husband, I think, had bought both, because we have two pairs listed, a large and a small. So I think he bought them for us one time back when we were adventurous and did things like hiking. <laughs> and uh, I don't know that we ever used them. We never needed them. So he's just trying to sell them off. And they sold, this pair sold for $18. And I loved this pair of shoes. If that had been a smaller size, I would have kept them. The brand was GH. Bass, space, bass. Um, but they were vintage, you know, it's still a company around today. You can't really see the mark on there, but it's got the little tag on the side. 
and they were just this cute little Oxford style heel and those sold for $30. They had interest all over the place, eBay, Posh, you name it. I think I had them on uh, Depop or an Etsy for a little while. Anyway, finally sold for $30. And just a little winter beanie with a pom-pom, dakin, dakin. And that just sold for 12 Another little bins find for us. Then LA Kings, this sold uh, on Poshmark for $17, an NHL, not vintage hat, but just, just a team hat. And this one is for the um, University of North Carolina. It's a reversible beanie. So uh, that one sold for 17 Again, it's a hat, so it was our bins clearance store. These two mugs were uh, picked up by my son when he had a brief, he kind of goes hot and cold with his thrifting and reselling and stuff like that. So um, he picked these out at the thrift store, a dollar a piece, oh no, 50 cents a piece. And then um, we had him take the pictures and do the information for the listing on eBay. He might have actually even made the listing. And then I cross posted it over to Posh. And so it was nice that it sold finally over here on Posh. I, I, I tried to work with him in the store about looking up comps and things like that. And he, I showed him like selling prices and stuff and he thought it was good enough. So I said, all right, let's do it. So it ended up going for 14, which was less than what he had wanted. But by the time they sold, he wasn't even interested <laughs> anymore. Uh, he was like, oh, good. <laughs> Knox Rose, kind of a, there's the label, you know, it's a Target brand. It doesn't sell for high money, but it sells. Like, And this was just a top. It wasn't even a dress or anything like that. But I just thought someone would want that with the waffle knit and the different colored, you know, floral pattern on it. And cool, our favorite brand strikes again. I believe these sold the same day as, or at least the same weekend as the cool jacket that we sold. So it was nice to have those two good cool sales, $68 for this pair of pants. Then moving over to Ruby Lane, this cute little jewelry holder. I always pick these up when I see them if they're cheap. They're just little ceramic things you hang by like your sink or maybe by your, I don't know, your bed or whatever to kind of throw your rings in when you are washing dishes or such. And that sold for $14. This was a just one shaker. It's for cinnamon sugar. And the brand is Hadley. Let's get a better picture. M.A. Hadley. So we've talked about Hadley before, I think, in, you know, past videos, just because they kind of had a, a moment, I don't know, maybe a year or so ago. And I don't know, maybe it wasn't that back that far, maybe earlier this year. Anyway, they were going out of business. And so the prices of Hadley stoneware pottery actually went up quite a bit on the resale market. Um, the company did get rescued, but I think they were shut down for a little bit while they restructured and stuff. So I think they're back in place, but I haven't found much or done research into the Hadley um, prices now to see how they're doing. But this little sugar shaker sold for $25 on Ruby Lane. Then this piece of um, glass was a very large sugar bowl. It didn't have its lid and it did have a couple issues, a couple chips in the bottom, but here's a picture of it glowing. It was like a Vaseline glass, uranium type thing. So this actually went to, um, if you remember a couple of videos back, I sold I sold a piece of um, the Tiffin Madeira little glasses that glowed 
whatever color they glowed. They glowed a different color, not green. Um, but I sold one to a viewer and I shared with you her Etsy shop and everything. Anyway, um, we got talking about, you know, glass that glows and she said, let me know if you have any more or come across anything interesting. And I said, Oh, wait a minute. I have this one listed. So she bought this one, um, out of my Ruby Lane shop. This was Indiana glass. So even with, you know, the issues, $24, it's just kind of fun to find stuff like that. And it's, I think it's fun to take the pictures for it. <laughs> okay. Let's go over to Etsy, to the vintage shop over there. We have sold another one of these, uh, cheese slicers. One of my favorite little utensils that I always, always, always pick up. $16 this one sold for. And then a Dymo. Uh, this is definitely a item that I think we can get better prices on Etsy than we could on eBay. Um, there's a few models of Dymos that do sell really well on eBay as well. But just these little colored plastic ones, um, you know, to get $35 for that, it's, you know, we, th we always try to throw some tape in with it. And so that does help up our price a little bit, but we sold that one. And then like a day we sold this one, like, so we, I had like a bin of these, like, I don't know, I kind of collected them up and we hadn't gotten them listed. And so then my husband just started working on getting them into the Etsy shop. And so $35 each for those, but nice fun colors, you know, very retro, very nostalgic. And then one pattern sold. So $10. I just look at that dress and I'm like, I think I had dresses like that in the eighties. I didn't like them cause I don't like frills and that kind of thing. But some of those like that, like, you know, they're a little bit simpler I could handle, but anyway, people love them still. So that sold for $10. Anyway, thank you guys so much. Again, I said, you know, thanks for being patient. I don't know what was going on. I was foggy last week and had some other issues happening. And so I just couldn't bring myself to do anything <laughs> or put a video together or anything like that. So I do appreciate you sticking with me. And um, as usual, leave a comment down below. If you had an awesome sale, how have your sales been going? Have you noticed any difference with this quarter for, as opposed to other quarters, um, do you have to lower your prices or make more aggressive offers than usual? But, or just share in the comments below what your favorite sale of, of last week or whenever <laughs> that since the last time we talked. Okay. All right. I will hopefully see you on later, see you later on this week. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your Tuesday.